And Shura has definitely come a long way since the start of the series with Rumu just enjoying building up his small village and now, we have finally arrived at the eve of the Founders Festival in the recent episode 19 of season 3, which is arguably one of the most important episodes so far, since it establishes many of the future principles of not just the Tempest Federation, but the beliefs of Rumu as well. So in this video, I'll be discussing about the speeches which will reflect this purpose, while also providing some detailed look at the contents they will remove from the episode, such as an inter loot meeting which took place following the banquet with the nobles and dignitaries. As usual, spoiler warning if you haven't watched the episode yet or might find the information I mentioned in the video to be spoilers. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Now then, episode 19 will be adapting chapter 1 and 2 of the volume 9 light novel, continuing from where the previous episode stopped after Rimuru have finished greeting Masaoki's team, and there will be a banquet later that night for all the nobles and dignitaries who have arrived in the town. And before Rimuru's toast to start the banquet, there were a few sequences from the light novel they were removed from the episode. For starters, when Rimuru was observing the crowd of people in the banquet hall, he explicitly stated that he noticed a petite blonde girl who resembled the doll walking around and the girl was actually Marabel Ross. So, and the reason she was present is because if you remember in episode 11, Marabelle informed Grambel that she will personally visit Tempest to determine the level of threat the monster nation poses, which is why you see her occasionally making a cameo throughout episode 19. Furthermore, the sequence where Rumu and King Gazer went over the railway project, along with the other advancements found in Tempest and the Dolphin King giving his full support to participate in the various projects was removed from the episode. Also, when Yom had joined their conversation, it was revealed in the light novel by Rumuru how King Gazer was intentionally conversing with them in a friendly and light-hearted manner because he wanted to demonstrate to the other nations the close relationship Dragon has with Tempers, and to help convince them that Yom, despite being a newly crowned king, deserved their attention as well. It was unfortunate this interaction was taken out from the episode because it really shows how experienced King Gazer was as a politician and provide a detailed look at the international politics in the Tenshara world. But moving on, there was another brief sequence from the light novel that wasn't shown in the anime, where numerous nobles had tried to approach Rumuru to request for one-on-one -on -one meetings with him because they wanted to learn more about the many innovations of Tempest and acquire them for their own nations. However, Rumuru only met with the ones that were fortunate enough to have been in his line of sight when he was heading to the main stage to give the toast that occurred in the episode. After the toast, Hakuro and his team would bring a giant fish into the banquet hall and it was revealed in the light novel to be a spear tuna. Additionally, the light novel actually provides a story on how Rumuru had accidentally discovered this species of fish during a fishing match between him and Gopta, and because it tasted exactly like tuna, Rumuru thought it would be a good idea to introduce this particular dish to everyone during the festival. That said, Akuro proceeds to fillet the fish just like in the episode, and much of the following sequence here will be the same as the light novel, with Rumu pointing out how people were afraid of trying raw fish, so he decides to take the initiative which is then followed by Hinata along with Yuki partaking in the sushi as well. Also it's funny the anime kept the recurring idea that Hinata is very sensitive and picky when it comes to food, and having Rumu and Yuki making fun of her to get revenge at her definitely adds to the overall scene. But it was only after King Geyser and Yom's group tried the sushi that the other nobles decided decided to give the food a try. However, the banquet was interrupted by the entrance of a Tempest Guard, followed by the various escorts of the other nations as well, who informed everyone inside the banquet hall that the Garden Dragon of the Sorceress Dynasty Saren has just entered the Tempest airspace, which meant that Empress Elmesia has personally arrived. Also, King Gaze explaining the significance of Empress Elmesia participating in the Founders Festival in person, the brief background of Saren and why it warrants such a reaction from all the nobles in the room pretty much went accordingly with the light novel. And when Rumu went to welcome Empress Elmesia along with her contingent, I like how the anime added the small detail of her heroic aura briefly causing Rumu to go blank, which wasn't mentioned in the light novel because for those that do not know, they are fairly equal in terms of overall strength since Elmesia is also an awakened being. But aside from that, both the interactions will happen in a similar fashion with the light novel, although I want to point out that Rumu mentioned how the Magus Knights who were escorting Almasia were all wearing legendary great magic armor, and the power emanating from them were predicted to be even greater than the former 10 great saints Arnold Bauman. And Rumu actually failed to notice that Era was part of Almasia's contingent until later, because he was apparently wearing the magic armor as well, so his presence had blended in with the Magus Knights. 
Having said that, after Rumo's brief exchange with Almasia, the banquet returned to normal and I like how Xion was looking so unimpressed by her in the anime. And Mio Mouse will arrive to give Rumo a report about the preparations for the festival and in a light novel. He was working together with Lilia as well as Riga to make sure they have enough supplies and merchandisers for the 3-day event. Furthermore, when Mio Mouse mentioned seeing a lot of unfamiliar merchants in the town, this will actually be foreshadowing a future plot point. But the rest of the conversation pretty much follows the light novel, although I want to mention that this this entire sequence was supposed to have taken place after the banquet in the interlude chapter, so I'm not sure why they decided to include this here other than to serve as a break between Amasia and Milim's arrival. Anyway, speaking of Milim, a group will finally arrive and even though I prefer the group shot of them entering the venue in the light novel, the anime version of showing Milim, Harian and Frey with their respective subordinates definitely felt more intimate. But what do you think? Between the two versions, which one do you like the best? Now, similar to Elmasia's interaction, the entire sequence involving Rumuru worrying about Milim being found out by Frey, along with him committing the biggest blunder ever by asking Frey about eating poultry, and composing himself afterwards to apologize for his mistake in the episode will play out the same way as the light novel. And it's super wholesome to see that Frey genuinely cares about Milim, even going so far as to test Rumuru's reaction to see if he'll be a good influence on Milim, so it's definitely cute seeing him teach her about apologizing whenever you do something wrong. However, poor Karen did not get such a nice treatment from Frey, and it was hilarious seeing Sophia's reaction, truly a memeable expression. Nonetheless, Rumuru guided them to be seated with him, and Shuna will be serving the main course to hopefully convince Midli about the benefits of cooking food, since it was the main reason why Milim brought him along for the Founders Festival in the first place, so that the Dragon Faithful would stop feeding her raw ingredients. Unfortunately, just like in the light novel, Midli was absolutely furious in the episode and was completely disgusted by the food, calling it disrespectful to the ingredients. And the anime did a fantastic job at showing Milim's personality here, because despite her often childish demeanor, she genuinely felt bad about Midli's behavior, even offering to have him leave the banquet hall to avoid disrupting the mood. However, before Rumu could say anything, Midli's statements will offend the most dangerous person in Tempest, Chuna, and she proceeds to lecture him about the importance of cooking food, using it as a metaphor about peaceful coexistence and harmony, how the various ingredients are there to represent the different cultures and races that are under Milim. She then goes on to give another example of the different dishes coming together to complement each other and how is the principle behind Rumor's dream. Honestly, the anime did an amazing job with the adaptation of Shuna's speech and even though it has taken word for word from the light novel, the episode still adds a lot to the overall experience by showing the various reactions from the people inside the banquet hall. And even though Rumu never thought that deep about the idea, the metaphor was still a good representation of the ideas and beliefs that he along with the entire series embody. But I digress, Juna's final words about not just simply throwing ingredients together to make something good in the episode, while having the camera pan over to Xion definitely made me laugh. With that, Shuna successfully convinced us mainly about the beauty of cooked food, and the rest of the banquet continued through the night. Having said that, there was an interlude chapter in the light novel that was removed from the anime, which shows what happened after the banquet ended, and it was mainly a meeting involving Rumu and his subordinates, and the subject of the meeting was that Rumu wanted to congratulate everyone, especially Shuna and Hakuro, for making the banquet a success. Next, Rumu turned his attention to Mio Mouse and like I said earlier in the video, his report should have taken place here, but it was moved to the earlier parts of the episode. Regardless, once Mio Mouse informs Rumuru about the status of the merchants that were helping to supply the event, he went on to talk about the martial tournament, which was another one of the reasons that Rumuru called for this meeting. To explain, Rumuru actually plans to have one of his subordinates representing Tempest in the martial tournament, and they were even more excited about the idea than Rumuru was, so everyone immediately started arguing on who should be chosen. And to stop them from arguing further, Rumuru bans Benimaru, Shion, Diablo, and Sowe from participating, but before they could voice their complaints, Rumuru Will explain the reason behind his order. Essentially, starting with Sowear, Rumu states how he was supposed to be the intelligence officer of Tempers, so being out in public wasn't ideal, and to further bribe him, Rumu gave him a new title as the head of Team Kurami or Dark Shadow, and he was successful in convincing Sowear. However, Rumu still had to deal with the remaining three, so he made up another bullshit title to give them, and since they were the strongest among his subordinates, he named them the Four Heavenly Kings with Benimaru as the leader of the group, while Shion and Diablo would be the normal members, which they quickly accepted. 
As for the final slot, Rimuru proposed to the remaining subordinates that whoever wins the martial tournament will earn the title of the Four Heavenly Kings, which made everyone quite excited. But because Hakuro promised to spend time with Momiji during the festival, while Gaburo is still busy preparing for his presentation, and Rigo will be on security duty, they all declined. Also, Ranga wanted to participate as well, but Rumu explained how it would be unfair against the humans, since it was a battle of martial prowess, which leaves only Gopta and Gao, so once it was decided, they were entered as seated participants. In any case, after the interlude chapter, the next day will mark the official start of the Founders Festival and Rumu will give an opening speech to everyone, but I won't go into what he said in the episode since it covers everything in a light novel. Although I do want to explain how significant this speech was, because I have seen people online complaining about it being a waste of time. To explain, the speech was basically a means for Rumu to convey his feelings about the future, and embodies the combination of all the hardships that Rumu and his friends had to endure throughout the anime, and the hard work everyone had put into for the Tempest Federation to become a success, beginning from just a run-down goblin village to a thriving city inhabited by the various races of the Great Jura Forest, and having survived all the schemes of not only Clayman but the Western Holy Church as well, Rimu has finally achieved his dreams of peaceful coexistence between monsters and humans. And for me, the Founders Festival will mark the true beginning of the Tantra series, with everything before just being the build-up for this very moment. That's why Rumu will warn anyone that wished to bring harm to Tempest and his friends in the episode, because he truly wants to build a peaceful world while maintaining all the relationship that he has and he will build in the future without sacrificing anyone in the process. And this idea will become the very doctrine of the Tempest Federation in future conflicts involving them. But yeah, that's all the kind of content found in episode 19. And before I end the video, I just wanted to share some of my favorite moments from the episode. For instance, when Rumu turned into his humanoid form during the final speech, it was hilarious seeing the reaction from Tis and other world children since they had no idea that he was a demon lord. And overall, I really enjoy all the other facial expressions that you see in this episode from the various characters. Also, there were a couple of notable cameos from characters such as Hiro and Towa from the Tantra Scarlet Bomb movie, along with Zenobia, Aslan, and Sauzer Collier from the OVA series appearing in the background of the episode. And somehow they managed to make Milim even more adorable than the previous episodes. So Tempest and With that said, this episode was truly important in terms of significance in the Tantra series with both Shuna and Rumor's speeches being the perfect representation of the message behind the entire series. So what are some of your favorite moments from this episode? Feel free to share your thoughts down below and be sure to check out my other videos as well. Also if you enjoyed this cut content video, remember to leave a like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button for more cut content videos as well. Thanks for watching and as always, stay safe everyone.